The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and it's my pleasure to be here, 10 to 11 Eastern Time, week on market days. The Dow is up 532 points at 34,680. This is important because how it breaks this nine-period exponential moving average, if it can do that on a closing basis, is going to be really important. And one of the things we're looking at here is there's been this rotation. Even today, we're looking at a rotation, and some of it is so unusual and um, we're looking at the Dow 517 the S&P so that's up 1.52 percent INDU the S&P is up 1.6 percent up 69 at 44.19 do you know that last night the S&P was down 60 points in the futures and now here it is up 67 points up actually more than 60 points this is very important because what it's, it's saying is that there's a – think of it as a sieve where you throw in all the little whatever it is and you shake it up and only the little tiny pieces fall out. This is what we were looking at. We're looking at – and this is what I'll be discussing on Saturday in my overview for my subscribers um, when I do the overview, overview video um, – What's working? What's not working? What do we have to look forward to over the next coming month? And I don't think it's recession because I think we've had a recession. If you look at the QQQ, there's been a recession since the high that was made back in November. November the 22nd was the high at 408.71 uh, in the NDX 100 trading vehicle, the Invesco QQQ Trust Series. And we made a low of 334. I mean, that's, you know, that's over a 10% correction in a very important sector that has the techs, that has all the innovative area uh, in, in the market. And even now, it's, uh, it's up 6 at 350, but it's kind of lagging. And we'll see. Do we, do we spend the next couple of weeks seeing the QQQs start to build some support, some support start, to buy, start to, to build some kind of um, – uh, not, I wouldn't call it predominance because the Dow is actually leading right now, but some kind of catch up of the leadership role and see it trading in the 360 to 365 area. That's going to be really important because this to me is a recession in a particular area. If you're looking at CTAS, which is Cintas, this is the overalls and uniforms. Syntax coming up. I'm still a little slow on this computer. Um, hello, anybody home? Come on. Oh. Yeah, it's just fascinating. I was, I was frozen earlier on, and in trying to get out of different, um, different screens, I hit one. I actually hit a, a trade. I didn't even mean to. I just next thing I look, I'm, I've got the trade. I had to quickly say get out, and then I had to close it down so that I could make space here. And we're looking at the uh, Sintas. That's a mini recession going from the high of December the 13th at 461 down to 371. So in the traditional sense of, of a recession, absolutely not. But in a rotational sense, saying a particular sector is really weak. Overalls, uniforms, rentals, Sintas Core, CTAS, trading up 5 at 386. Um, wow. Uh, 461 down to 371, almost 100 points, 20 what, twenty percent or so. That's a big deal. So I think that what we're looking at now is a very selective rally in certain sector, sectors that are going to say, what recession? I mean, Procter & Gamble, let's see what that's doing today. Yeah, holding up near the all-time highs. At 160, hit 165 all-time high just a couple of weeks ago. In fact, just a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, this is a rotational thing in the den. Someone said KHC. What, what is KHC? KHC? What is KHC? Oh, Kraft Heinz. Yeah, there you are. 
up, uh, up uh, doing very nicely, not near highs, because this, I mean, Kraft Heinz had a whopper of a decline, going from the 100 level uh, back in 2018 down to 20, about 20 in uh, March 23rd of uh, 2020. So yeah, it's still doing quite nicely. So this is very selective. Look at the IYT. The IYT is the transportation index. Yes, I would say there's been some kind of Di big digestive phase from 287 uh, May high down to the uh, 240 area and then back up to 281 then back down to 250 I, this is this is rotational and that's really what I want to be talking about now let's go back to, to our story we want to look at the IWM the Russell 2000 I mean that is a horrible candle this is still a very selective move 198.62 up 262 it has to be in the 205 area, 202 to 205 by this time next week. Otherwise, it's a real problem. So that's really important. Uh, look at, yeah, in the den, look at the CRM. This is salesforce.com. Almost had it as a buy this morning. I can say we chose something else because it's in a sector that I think is going to be become quite hot in 2022. We'll see what happens. This is at 221.66, up 10, up 5%. That's good. That's a start. And that says that we might see a corrective process going on where a, a base building for the for areas that were absolutely fantastic i mean let's face it from the 2020 low at about 119 in salesforce.com going to an all-time high did i type the number in i think i did yes uh, 311.76 on the 9th of november with a 310 round number a low uh, that day and it slumps to 208 i mean let's face it uh, this is this is Needs a lot of work and a lot of stocks. I'm going to put a question in about Disney. Yeah, Disney, uh, Disney. I, I've got my eye on why? Because when we come out of this COVID situation, there's no question. People are just going to say, "I have to get out. I want to go to all the Disney, um, the, all, all the different, different Disney entertainment theme parks." And we'll see what happens there. More important will be because it's a media company as well. I can't do it right now. I, have, I haven't had this in ages slowing down. I mean, hopefully by tomorrow when I do the show, I'm going to be able to uh, have refreshed everything. I, I think it might be my computer. I was going to earlier this morning. I was going to close everything down, start fresh as what I used to do every couple of days. And on this particular uh, computer, I didn't do it. So I've got Disney uh, trading um, at 137. It's coming off a low that was made just under 130. We're going to be following this. What I really wanted to type in was six, which is uh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, six is Six Flags Entertainment. That is more, I think, more um, the outdoor entertainment type thing. And that's coming off a low. It made a high recently of 45, comes down to the 36s, trading at 39.22. Yeah, just stuck in a range. I thought this one would give us a better clue, but it's not. Um, so a question, could I do a comment on GLD? Uh, GLD made a peak E-top in the daily chart. Um, I, yeah, I, we've got a break coming up. I won't rush this. We want to know what's going on with gold, but it is in a sell mode at the date GLD. By the gold trust, there's a one tenth price of spot gold. I'll be back in a moment, guys. Five, six, six, six. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC. Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yeah, so this is what we've got. We've got GLD down at $1.29 at $168.49. Just right sitting right on the 200 period exponential moving average. But look, this is very important. And one of the reasons why I was so suspicious of the breakout in gold when you didn't have the GLD, or the, sorry, the GDX, that is the gold miners following. I like to see them in sync. I actually like to see... Um, the GDX rally first and then gold follows, that to me is usually a little bit more sustainable. Um, there's no real hard fixed rule that I have. Tom, Tom O'Brien, who's the gold expert, uh, could probably discuss it in, in those terms. But I'm just looking at where I look historically in my just to my memory. And that just says, I prefer to see the gold mining stocks rally strongly and then i don't care really what happens with gold it usually follows and then silver will follow and silver might lead uh, i'm always thinking what's that game where you you hold hands and you got a long line nobody does that anymore and then you run and then one person the person on one end stops and then the whole thing just whatever it's called and then everybody falls down and that's kind of what we see here then with silver finally has its say then the whole sector of those um, precious metals turns down so the gdx is really the clue that i'm using right now and the gdx rather than gold the question was on gold only went to a peak c above the 200 period moving average then fell but if you look at the weekly chart that's telling you what i do all the time that i'll be discussing on saturday in my overview the kind of chart pattern that says this should be a successful h pattern that then breaks out in a cup formation and rallies sharply above the left side arch. And that would say that the GDX should have run above uh, the 34.08 area, um, and it didn't. In fact, it broke down and in the 33s, and now we're at 30.19. And that just says, not yet. And one of the reasons is, let me just do so. Uh, so what I'm saying is that the GLD... Um, Obviously, he's following gold, but I see a little bit more to the downside. And silver wasn't really following. Now the chart patterns actually look a little bit similar. What happens when silver finally catches up, its chart looks a little bit better just for a moment and then kind of fails. And that's what we're looking at because silver's down 97 cents and we're 22.83. What's really important about this is that you've got the dollar 
the dollar breaking out sharply like this, and I don't know if it's going to hold this leg, but it's really important that it did break out for the first time above the resistance. And if you, now I can do it. I'll, I'll, unfortunately, when I sub for Tommy Jr. and he show the the kickoff market kickoff program earlier on. Uh, because there was such an incredible flurry of buying and short covering and all sorts of things, my uh, system held back. So that 97.80 high that I had drawn, at least for the first cup formation, ball really formation in the dollar, uh, we broke above that. And in fact, today we went to 97.27. Oh, we haven't gone above it. So 90, yeah, we have. 97.80 was what we were looking for. We went, we went to, no, we went to 97.27. So that's really important. And then if this starts to be a close in the 98.30s or 98.50s, let's say, uh, on a weekly basis, you're looking at 102.99, that major high of around about April of 20, um, 2020. And you remember, we went long 2018, uh, way back. Uh, and we've, we're still long. We held this UUP position. Uh, that's the... Uh, UUP is called. That's the uh, dollar bull, I think. Yep, DB US dollar bull. We've had it uh, forever and since 2018. And the stop held when it went all the way. We, we saw it go all the way to the high. And that was um, and the monthly chart. It was a major high. And then saw it come all the way back. But the stop held. And we've just kept it, and I've kept it because I, I'm keeping it not as a technical thing, not to do with gold, not to do with the euro, but to do with as an icon to the American economy as one of the best. And that's where countries around the world want to put their money into the dollar. That's just as simple as that. Um, I, I don't want to explain to it now, maybe technical Friday tomorrow. I will. Um, so. Yes, it is. This is we've got that same pattern that says rising against the falling gold. But that's that to me, that is subsidiary to the reason why I initially got it and why I still uh, want, want to keep it for subscribers to my opening call. And I had a question recently saying, why on earth do you do, why, why do you still have the dollar? Who's trading the dollar? Well, I have people, uh, subscribers from all around the world. And they really do watch the dollar very closely, either for business reasons or whatever. So that was it. Now the question about crude oil, CL. I'm suspecting, and I'll say this for a little while, that that left side high of October of 2018, 85.65, that this is the area that's really critical, that in the 86s we might start to see a lot of resistance and that resistance will suggest that crude oil could have, there could be an abatement of the uh, tension between uh, Russia and the oil situation, Russia and maybe the rest of the world. Um, and that might see just a pullback. But looking out, this monthly chart is saying crude oil. Well, wow. let's put it together with the XLE, the XLE leg C in the daily chart. Uh, which says to me I should have probably, uh, this is the area that we should have been in and holding rather than using as trading in different vehicles. Leg C in the daily, leg C in the weekly, leg E in the monthly above the Chapman Wave falling axe resistance level. Uh, this is really strong and it says to me energy cannot be dismissed. And ever since, ever since we um, stopped the, the pipelines, you've just seen this exponential rally uh, in in uh, the whole area of energy, especially crude oil, I I, I think this is this is going to be 2020 2021's theme. It was, and I think it's going to be 2022's theme as well. And that I'll talk about um, in my upcoming video for subscribers on um, Saturday. My overview. It's where I do a big summation of where we are. We've raised a lot of cash. We're in a good good position. We've got we've got our positions, the long positions that we've held. Uh, I, they are acting very finely. They're acting very nicely today. Uh, the new one that we got just by the skin of our teeth, uh, pre-opening, uh, that's acting quite well. I had a question about natural gas. Natural. Oh, don't type it there. 
<laughs> natural gas is a continuous contract of natural gas it's trading up uh, 14 ticks at 4.05. You know, the big issue for me was that this the spiral in leg B failed so miserably going from around about the 3.40 area to the 4. Point, I forgot to type that in because the continuous contract, I usually don't like to type in because when you come back a month later or so, it's been smoothed out and the price changes, not the patterns, 4. 4.0 this got up 4.69 we're at 4.05 right on the 200 period moving average you know there's been a discrepancy something's going on and, and, and we have seen that periodically the crude oil moves and natural gas doesn't move even though it's in the energy sector so I would I'm not going to say it quickly let's just wait a minute I'll go to UNG in a moment and then we'll talk about that I'll be back Basil Chapel Gaza 489 are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So just for UNG, which is the United States National Gas Fund, trading at 14.23 right on the 200 period exponential moving average again. Uh, normally it doesn't hang out here for more than a day or two before it makes a big move up or down. I suspect that by Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, the 1st of February, if you see crude oil finally having a bit of a dip and it'll be a more, just a technical, just over, overbought condition, because I, I think that as long as you've got Russia making waving uh, 
different signs to say, huh, we, we, we're, in the, in the, we're in the driver's seat right now when it comes to crude oil. Um, I, I don't think there'll be more than a temporary pullback and then we start heading higher. So that could be, so I would say that if by, if by today's Thursday, if by Monday at my time during my show, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, UNG crude oil is pulling back even just a little bit, but you've actually seen a sign that natural gas is moving into the 14, 95, 15, 15 area. That'll say, great. Now here's the move that should, I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying it should take it to a leg D above the high of 16, in this case, 16, 19, made on the 12th of January. But I can just tell you this, be careful, because if the natural gas breaks under 13.50, closes under 15, 13.50, it's just stuck for a little while longer. But I do see it having the potential for a nice spike to the upside. But I think you might have to wait for at least flattening or a pullback in the crude oil. Now, a couple of questions have come in. Let me say, and also in the den, there were a couple of questions earlier, and I said I'd get to them. I thought I'd, I wrote them down, but I must have been really busy because I was I was getting my my system was one of the few times in years that it got stuck. It got stuck again just a few minutes ago. Um, so that's there. What I want you to look at here is, in. Let me just show you something. Hopefully I can get to it there. This is the 10-minute chart of the ESE Mini. From the low that was made at 23, that's 11 o'clock last night, that was made in the 42, so did I see, yeah, 42, there it is, at 22.50, that's 10.50 last night, at, at 42.63, we went peak A, peak B, peak C, pulls back, goes back over the 9P moving average above the 14 to a leg D, chap wave instant restart, A, B, C, D. How important are Ds? Well, 1D, 2Ds, pulls back in time for about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, makes a low around around 43.19 and then goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak. No, it goes to leg D, right at the high today of 44.22.00. And then... It makes a peak D in this candle, and the candle we're in right now says 9 is still above the 14. Had a huge pullback. Look at the on balance volume at lows. The 9 is crossed, um, so the 9 period differential and the MACD is crossed negative, but the price is still holding okay. But now it's down, down, now the Dow is down from its high to 314. SB is up 34. So this is what I'm saying, that we had that first hour of a short squeeze. I mean, a, a short squeeze, a double short, a triple short squeeze from yesterday's high, where everyone thought, oh, my God, we're going to break out. And we went up 500 points in the Dow, up 60 something in, in the, no, it's almost 90 in the S&P, and then reversed huge. And then it sort of stabilized. And then, kaboom, there was this big sell-off again. Um, Going into that low that was made, was that the low? Uh, yeah, that was the low that was made. I remember notating this last night. That was uh, at the bell. Three o'clock makes this dreaded H pattern. Peak D as well. That was at about two o'clock. All right, slow down, slow down. Uh, that was at right there. Right there. If I can get the time right. Okay, there we are. We're at 14.30. So at about 2.30 yesterday, we make a high to peak D, 44.22-ish, plummet down to the 42, what was that, about 90s. Rallies up, goes to only a peak C, minus, fails, makes the dreaded H pattern, then goes to that low that was made at, what did I say, 22.30, that's 10.30 Eastern time. And then we started a rally. That's been a spectacular rally. Now you see this is the issue. There is so much there is so much opportunity for news to come in. Bad, good, bad, good, bad all the time. That we're looking I haven't been able to change the stance that we've had of being short the Dow. We have taken some profits off that uh, DOG position, but we're remaining short. If I had got for four days in a row, if I had got the low in the lows, I would have said as a trade. 
That's good, but I think it's only a trade because until we see the QQQ, the IWM start to move, and this is what I'm going to talk about in my uh, web, my, my my video on Saturday for subscribers, my overview. I I need to talk about this because until we see a significant rally that's sustained in those massively hit. NDX 100 type stocks. Let's just go to uh, what's the name's uh, thing? A R K K. I use this only as an example. We don't have a position in it. Yep, there it is, down 46 cents. A R K K, uh, A R Arc Innovation ETF at 68.57, down 46. This is not what you should see. That's the only reason why this is one of the few times, I think, for those of you who know my work here for nearly 20 years, um, it's one of the few times at a, at a V-shaped bottom with the VIX index at the top and where we've got to buy where I haven't gone long, um, even if we were short switched along or even just said, let's go long. Uh, the dime is I just, I am not in a position technically to say that all the, all, everything's lined up correctly. It is just not yet lined up properly. I, I might miss out, but we, we still have a core long position from the April lows of of 2020. But we're talking about trading positions. So the day is young. Now the real day. So you remember yesterday I said, I even put in the den that from 2.40 on Wednesday, Eastern time in the afternoon, that's when the real market will show up. Well, did it show up or didn't it show up? We saw what happened, and I have to feel the same way now. From now on, now if we have a big rally and we go up 550 points or more in the Dow, I say, you know what? Now I think we're finding something substantial enough to have a rally into next week or maybe even a little bit more. But I still want to see the IWM, the Russell 2000 rally. And it's not. Now it's down 60 cents. I, I would say that's not good action. So when the question came up about recession, I think we're seeing recession, but it's selective recession, and it's not the full market where you say, oh, now we're in a recession. That, that's different. We're seeing uh, sort of sectors that are, are under tremendous pressure and other sectors that are not. So now I need to go back to something that was questioned that then came in. Uh, where was it? Uh, Fix has been steady, in my opinion, has not. Had a serious spike as of yet. Uh, that's Peter. So, Peter, you asked another question earlier on, and I hope I can see it. Let's see. Oh, we got, oh, we got time. Good. Okay, let me find it. It was a good question, but I couldn't get to it. And I will. Oh, there are a lot of very good questions in the Thai YouTube and in the den. So, in the den, there was a question earlier on what I look at, and now I've forgotten what it is, and I haven't written it down. I try to find it during the bank. Basil Chapman, Tiger Admissions Hour, Dow's up 3 or 44, SP's up 37. Really important couple of days. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Pedro White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, uh, question, let me go to some of the questions. Really nice, good questions. IBB, so actually the person talking about it was talking about LABU, but that's a, a, a multi-ETF uh, uh, percentage of the IBB. The IBB is the IBB NASDAQ Biotech ETF. Actually, I don't know if LABU is IBB or whether it's the um, uh, S&P um, um, Biotech. Anyway, let's go to, as if it was the IBB. Made a high of 177. 0.57 August, week of August the 13th, 2021. Peak D, how important are Ds? There you go. And we pull back to the recent low in the 120s. <coughs> to be exact, it was 122, was it, or three? 122.94 on the 24th. Has a big spike within two days, tries to get to the nine period moving average, and it fails. And today it looked like it was going to rally, and now it's red. It's down 67 cents at 125.55. That's what I mean by rotational recession or digestive formations. They kind of come to the same thing, right? Whether it's digestive, you call it a recession. But in this area, Nasdaq Biotech had a recession. That's all I'm saying. If you go 170, down 50 points from 177, I would say that that's a serious decline. More important is that the monthly chart, look at that red candle. It says you can have an inside bar next month, but there's a chance you're going to have to do some retesting of the most recent low. So all I'm saying there is this is typical of what we're seeing right now. The selectivity is so important. What happens for the rest of the day, as some folks say, oh, well, this is working. Let's go back to what's working. I don't want to be in areas that aren't working. And that's where we see. So that, that that's the one one question. The volatility index still holding pretty well um, above its low of uh, 28.42 today. We'll keep an eye on that. That is a clue. The big ictus, the top that was made at 38.94 in the next three days, is there going to be something bad? I think so much has come out that's bad. I don't see what could take it above 38.94 at this particular point. So what I'm thinking is that this week, this week in the weekly chart in leg E, we could we could close by tomorrow um, more towards the lower end, towards the 27, maybe the 26s, if there's some kind of a bounce later in the day. And that would just say to me, this this allows you to focus on What's working? All right, let's get back to our story because then a question came in. Uh, January 2022, please compare to January 2014. Do you see the S&P recovery for the rest of the year? So let me get out of that as a question to see if there are any other questions. Yep, there's a question there on the dollar. Let me just see NVIDIA. Um, the questions well. Yeah, NVIDIA is acting terribly. Um, high, dollar high basil. Agree with someone who asked of all things to hold so long. Why the dollar versus Apple and index, just about anything else. Um, 
Are you expecting a huge upturn in the dollar? Thanks, Kevin. No, I just think the dollar is going to be holding very well and making these slightly higher highs and higher lows, at least for a little bit. But it's what it is saying is that my focus on the the dollar as the U.S. economy, that's the way I'm looking at it. And so far, it's acting well, as long as we can have rotational corrections. So I'll get to that a little bit more tomorrow. What I do want to show you is, let me see if I can do this right now with one of my charts with the black background, my very long-term charts. There it goes. S&P, find the one that says S&P. Oh, no. Yeah, there it is. S&P, click. So you're talking about the S&P 2014, that turn up, it's coming. It'll be there. A little bit slow, but it's there. Come on, there you go. So 2014, 2009 low, 666.79. Remember the day of the low, January the 6th, sorry, March the 6th, 2009. We went along that day of the low. Uh, we managed to get quite a few of those. It's important. So we're talking about 14. So this is 2014, and that's February. So January was a little bit shaky. The S&P was at 1838 high, whoops, 18, 1850 high and 1770 low. And then it just had steady higher highs and higher lows. It did make a couple of peaks into 2015, then it went to a peak G, May the May of 2015 at 2134.72, and then had a, a, a timeout for quite a while. It went to the low in uh, March or February of 2016 at 8, 8, 8, 8 to 10. No, I, I have to treat this very differently. You see the size of this candle and everything about it. I would normally say, oh, my God, that looks like a D or an E or an F, but at least a D. No, it's a B. It's only a B in this S&P. And that doesn't tell you how high you should go to for, for C and D. We might only go normally higher for leg C, and then normally higher for D, and then we have an even greater turn down in 2022. I don't want to go there right now. I, I'm thinking a certain way, and my idea is that the pattern that we're looking at with this number of bars, look from the 2020, 2020 March low, gee, I never typed that in. I don't, I don't go to this particular chart very often. Um, that was at 2191. We hit 2418, wasn't it? Uh, twin, uh, sorry, 4818. Yeah, 4818. That is just a massive move to the upside. So I think we're going to use more time, some more price to the downside. But, you know, there are other ways. Tomorrow I'll do a little bit more detail as to say what, what would be key support. But in the meantime, certainly the support of... Um, the monthly candle that was made just the other day of 42.22. That's 160 points from here. It's 1,600 points in the down to the downside, 2,000 points. I would say that's really what I'm looking at. That's going to be key support. How much further we go to the upside here is going to be important. There's just no question in my mind that I would put it at over 88 to 92 percent for the chances of making of not making a new high in um, in February. It just it seems to me are really very strong. But the way we are whole, trying to build support, the way we've rotated, are you telling me, let's go back to CRM, because this is really, a, it's a fantastic company. They were the leaders going into cloud. They just did everything. Um, are you telling me that cloud CRM, Salesforce.com, uh, won't have another fabulous big rally. I, I don't see why not. They're in the business of business. They're in the business that almost every major company needs to use that type of resource that they have. Um, what? It seems to me we're just waiting on now we're waiting uh, 201.51 was the low back in 20 uh, uh, last year. Or was that 20, 2020? No, sorry, that was March of 2021. That's, a, that's what I was thinking. And it's gone to a peak D. And this is serious. This is the third month of a red candle. 
So I am thinking that looking out, one has to start building cash positions to be able to, to buy that are absolutely fabulous companies. This is just an example. There could be many others. I mean, CRWT, crowd in the cyber area, that could be down uh, from almost 300 down to 150, gets cut off. Great companies, they just out of faith. I'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let's just do this quickly, and then I'll do tomorrow. And I'll be doing Tommy uh, O'Brien's show, The uh, Market Kickoff. It's going to probably be here tomorrow. So I'm going to take his place, and I'll also do my show. It'll give me a lot of time to be able to look at things, and I'll explain what I'm going to be doing in my my uh, overview for subscribers on Saturday. This is going to be uh, different to my usual ones. I'm going to be looking at sectors that could be working, why they should work, where they should go, and chart patterns. Because look, when you make as severe a V-share, uh, sorry, a plunge as you have in the dreaded H pattern, we're looking at the S&P Weekly, I had a question. Believe me, I've spent not hours, not days, but weeks and months on this to see if there could be an alternate count. Could this be a peak D? And therefore, all the indices are at, at a point where we could get a much deeper correction. No, it keeps coming back to a B because the two. 2346.38 low of December of 2018, and the S&P had to pick up the previous um, uh, notation to go to a G at 3393.52, February of 2020, and then we plunged 35% to 2191.86. This is a brand new move, no matter how I pick it out. So I'm looking at that, and I'm just saying, 
It's going to be a selective move here. Let's see what happens for the rest of the day. There should be buying attempts. Will they hold? Will you finally get the cues to rally? That's really important. Watch the volatility index. If the volatility index is starting to fall to 29.86, if it goes back into the 28s or lower um, by so after 2.30, 3 o'clock Eastern time this afternoon, and the Dow is actually up about 4.50, and the S&P is up, say, 62 or more, I think you're going to have a decent close, and that will just say, hey, this this rotation is starting to find some selectivity for sustainability rather than just rally, failure, failure, rally, failure, just alternating. So that's what to keep in mind. In the meantime, back at the ranch, let me also tell you that in the context of candles, this third day, the fourth day, after a significant low at 30,150 in the down, it's really important that you go straight to the first thirty five thousand and thirty seven in a short period of time. That would be a good sign. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Larry Pizzarento. Great programming coming.